Hi. Hi, we're live on YouTube as well. Terrific. Well, very nice to meet all of you tonight. And welcome to our live demo session. Thanks for waiting a few minutes as we were getting all of the technology set up. Now, what we're going to do tonight is that I'm very lucky to be joined by two incredible people, two incredible co-hosts, who are going to show this new way of teaching. You may already have noticed that the way to interact with us is very different from the usual Zoom meeting. In fact, the way to interact with us is to type messages into the chat where you send the messages to chat relay. And you can try that. You'll see that the messages will appear right here in about 10 seconds. This is actually one of our new features which we developed, which makes it possible for us to have this large interactive class in a respectful way. Okay, now I want to tell you a little bit about what you're gonna see. Tonight, the first half is going to be a demonstration of this new teaching method. And the second half, I'll talk a bit about, if you like this teaching method, how you can go and use this to learn all kinds of mathematics. I'll talk about the structure of our courses. Now for the first half, we're really, really happy to have two incredible people to lead this. They're both math geniuses. I've had the chance to work with both of them for a while. One of them is Eddie. Eddie was actually the hello. state champion. Oh, yes, hello. Thanks, Eddie. Eddie was the state champion for math counts in Ohio back when he was doing math counts in middle school. And we also have Jesse. Hello. Yes, hello, Jesse. Jesse is also somebody who made it all the way up to the state level of math counts in the great state of Texas, which, by the way, is one of the toughest states in the entire country. Maybe I want to make a bit of a comment about math counts. If you're not familiar with that competition, that's the most prestigious and most difficult competition uh, for, uh, for, for, for middle school students in the United States of America. It's a giant tournament. And to make it all the way to these levels means that they're pretty good at mathematics, but actually they're good at many, many other things as well. Maybe I'll mention some of them later on in this live stream. The most important thing though, is that we're all really happy to talk to you about math. The idea here is we wanted to bring people who are great at math, great at other things, and fun to be around to talk about some fun problems. So let's take it away from here. Eddie and Jesse, why don't you go? Thank you, awesome. So today we're gonna to be going over a few questions from the mock test that daily challenges very own AMC eight mock test, uh, specifically just one of the problems though, number 15. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the problem. So Professor Lowe, what is the challenge for today? Awesome, a memory card stores 120 minutes of video at regular quality or at the same time, 60 minutes at high quality. So if you record for a total of exactly 90 minutes, how many of those can be a high quality video? Wait, I do not think they can see the problem right now. been a minute and some change. We got some answers coming in. We got some people saying 30, some people saying 60. Um, a lot of threes actually, which I believe is, is 30 if I remember the answer choice correctly. Awesome. I'm curious if you guys have any ideas to go with that. I'm wondering how you guys are arriving at your answers. Any math that you guys have done, any intuition, I don't know, any process yeah. between how Just you guys Any are ideas thinking. that you might so have Maybe used. 30. Somebody says answer choice four. 60. Yeah. What? 
Whoa. I actually like that. I'm curious. How did you figure that out? Did you just look at it and be like, whoa, it works out? Or did you just, did it take some time? Awesome. That actually is very interesting. It works out. If you, yeah. uh, it was what, I like 60 that minutes approach. of high quality. And then 120 minutes, I'll do this color, 120 minutes at regular quality. And if you do half of both, so I'll take, I'll take up half the capacity with high quality, which is 30 minutes of high. And then the other half of the capacity with the regular, which is 60 minutes of regular, it adds up to 90. That isn't very, that's very interesting. Derek makes a good point. 60 minutes is not a choice. But you make sure you read the, make sure you read the, the question carefully. I think Ooh, I see Devin, it, I, Devin has a really, sorry, Devin has a really interesting approach. Devin says high quality video costs two times more storage. Okay. I like that idea. If high quality costs two times more storage, maybe that can, maybe that can explain some sort of correlation between the amount of time that we record on high and the amount of time we record on regular quality. Yeah, that's actually a really nice observation. And I think that will lead to a whole other way of looking at the problem, which we'll see later. Um, other than, I see a lot of answer choice three. I think the second most one that I see is answer choice four, which is also very interesting. Because if you look at it, the numbers that were given in the problem is we have, oops, we have 60 minutes of high quality and then 120 minutes of regular quality. And it asks for 90 minutes total. So, it just happens at 90 smack dab in the middle, right? So it might be tempting to go some of this, exactly half of the 90 goes this way and half the 90 goes that way for an answer 45. But that doesn't end up working out. Ooh, maybe we should have Professor Lowe explain why that doesn't work. I think that'd be pretty interesting. All right, let's go ahead and ask Professor Lowe what he would do next. Professor Lowe, what do you think we should do next with this problem? videos of solving problems. Got that? It's okay, the math is easier. Now, in this question, we have two kinds of speeds. We have the regular quality, and at regular, the card can store 120 minutes. However, on a very high-end camera, you sometimes can also record in high quality. And on this camera, High quality would let you record 60 minutes of video. Now the question asks, if we have exactly 90 minutes to record 90 minutes, then how can I split that between regular and high? I want 90 minutes. Well, that's obvious. 90 is exactly halfway between 60 and 120. So the answer should be that 45 of those minutes are at regular and 45 minutes are at high. Seems reasonable. If you ever do something like this, always plug in your answer to make sure it makes sense. On an AMC competition, when there are answer choices and you see that as an answer, it is also exciting. So let's try it. 45 was an answer choice. Does it work? What if? we put 45 minutes at regular and 45 minutes at high. The way to check whether this works is to think about what fraction of the memory card gets used up in this way. When recording the regular part, we will use up 45 divided by 120 of the memory card. And when we're recording it at high quality, we'll use up 45 divided by 60 of the memory card. Let's try adding those two fractions together. Those should equal one, if that's the right answer. First, let's try to simplify those fractions. The second one's easier. 45 divided by 60 is 3 quarters. And as for the first one, maybe I'll see that there's a common factor of 5 
if I take out the common factor of five, then I get nine divided by 24. There's a fun trick. When you divide a number by five, like 120 by five, you can divide it by 10 first and then times two to compensate. But nine over 24, both the top and the bottom have a factor of three. So if I divide that out, I get three over eight. So is three eighths plus three quarters equal to one? No, it's not. And one way you can tell is because three quarters should add to one quarter. And that's not one quarter. One quarter is two eighths. So that means this is wrong. Actually, that means this was a trick question, which is quite common. So if the answer isn't just to say, if that's halfway in between, then it should be half of each. What else can we do? Here's one strategy that works whenever you're doing something like an AMC competition. There are answer choices. So just try plugging in answer choices and see what happens. And the first answer choice was 20. What if we put 20 minutes at high and the rest 70 minutes at regular? Let's try that. Regular would now be 70 minutes out of 120 for the full capacity. And high would be 20 minutes out of the 60 minute full capacity. This would be if we're checking the answer 20 and just using the fact that there are answer choices to play with. Do these two add up to exactly one? Here, let's do a quick test. The easiest way to do this is to look at the 20 over 60. That's one third. So if these two add up to one, that better be two thirds. Is that two thirds? No, two thirds would actually be 80 over 120. So that means the answer is not 20. All right, we got, I think we got an answer from for every single choice in chat right now. Um, but I believe most people are saying one. Yes, the most people one. are saying one. And one was, I believe high quality takes up more space. I'm curious how are you guys exactly getting to that number. But before we get to the hard math, I think if you just like take a moment to think about it, it would make more sense for high quality to take up more space, right? It's high quality going to take up more data because it's better version of the video. So yes, a lot of people are saying high quality, which is true. Awesome. Cynthia says, yeah. I think this depends on how much is being recorded. Be careful there. I guess that's technically true. So maybe if you do like five hours of regular, it's going to be more than a minute of high quality. But I think it's assuming the same amount of both. If you have the same amount of both, which one's going to take up much more, more space? Yeah, I think it's actually just I think you can pretty much answer this problem just by using like not kind of common sense. Like if you really think about it, you do want, you will take up more storage and therefore you'll have less time by using high quality just because, I mean, it's a higher quality. And so it obviously takes more to do that. But if we also wanted, we could show this with a variable. So for regular, we get 120 minutes of recording time. And then if we were to use high quality, we'd only get 60 minutes of recording time. So let's just call the amount of storage, let's just call it X. So storage is equal to X. And so for every minute of regular, we're using X out of 120, X over 120. Um, that much storage just for recording on one minute of regular. Now, if we're recording on high, we're going to use X over 60 amount of storage for every minute that we record on high. So if we compare, we know that X over 60 is definitely going to be larger than X over 120. So it's definitely going to take more storage to record um, on high quality. And therefore it's also going to take less, you have less time that you can record with high quality. 
Yeah, I guess sort of as like a visual representation of what Jesse just showed algebraically, it's kind of like if the storage is constant, the storage is the same for no matter what you're recording on regular or high. But since you have more minutes on regular, that means that every minute ends up taking less space than the high one. And this is kind of like, if storage is hard to think about, this is kind of like distance, I guess distance is easier to think about. So a common conversion is like eight kilometers is equal to five miles which it might be tempting to go, okay, kilometers are longer because eight is bigger than five. But the thing is, if they're the same distance, five miles means that, hey, each mile takes up more space. So a mile is actually longer versus a kilometer being much shorter for each one. So I guess a, sort of a parallel between the two. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's move on and let's see what Professor Lowe thinks about this. So Professor Lowe, what else can we do with this problem? What else can I do? Actually, I want to tell you a test taking tip. If you have answer choices that are arranged in order, you can actually start with the middle one. And if you get an answer that's in the wrong direction, it's sort of like guessing a number. You know what I mean? Like if you play that game of, I have a number between one and a hundred, what's the first number you should guess? It's not that you should guess, is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? You should start in the middle. So let's try the middle answer choice. The middle answer choice was 30, 30 minutes at high. What happens if at regular, you film 60 of the minutes, there are 90 minutes altogether, out of the 120 that you could have on a full card, and at high, you film 30 minutes, and 60 minutes is a full card. Do these two add up to one? Oh, they do, this is beautiful. Both of these are exactly one half. And therefore, the answer to the whole question is to put 30 minutes at high. And we're done. That's one way to do this question. That's using the test taking strategy called try plugging in answer choices and see what happens and start with the middle answer choice and work from there. But it's more satisfying to know that you can solve this problem in other ways where you can do it without guess and check. I want to give you two more techniques to do that. The first uses some very, very simple algebra. And we already have a sense of what to do. You see, we wanna know how much to put at high. Let's call that X. If we record X minutes at high out of the 60 minute full capacity, what fraction represents how much of the card we use with the regular recording? It's something divided by 120 because that's the full card. But remember, we're supposed to record 90 minutes altogether. So that means there should be 90 minus X minutes at regular. Now, I just want to know what value of X makes it so that this plus this equals one. That's an equation. Let's write that down. I have to have 90 minus x divided by 120 plus x divided by 60 equal 1. When we're trying to solve these kinds of equations, you can be creative. To me, an equation is just something with an equal sign, and you just beat up the left and the right sides until you get x alone with only one rule, which is that you have to be fair, do the same thing to both sides. I don't really like fractions. So let me start by just clearing out the denominators by multiplying both sides by 120. If I do that, the left side, I get 90 minus X from this part, and I get a plus two X, because if I multiplied X over 60 by 120, I'll get two X. And that's equal to 120. Now we can solve this for x. Over here, 2x minus an x is just 1x. And let's subtract 90 from both sides, and I get x equals 30. And I'm done. That's x. x was the number of minutes at high quality. This, by the way, is why I chose to make x be the number of minutes at high quality instead of the number of minutes at regular. You see, because if I had chosen to make X the number of minutes at regular, I would still have one more step, which would be, well, how many minutes are at high? I'd have to do a subtraction. But this method works, 
And this is using algebra. It works. Algebra is a safe way to solve a lot of questions like this. All right, I think this is pretty unanimous in chat. Everybody's saying answer choice three, which is two times as much, which is great. Um, I'm actually, I'm gonna leave this drawing up from the last part because I think this actually shows exactly the answer because, because you can take double the amount of minutes in regular than in high, each one takes up half as much space. Each minute of regular takes up half as much space. So the converse, I guess, well, the other way around thinking about it is the high quality takes up two times as much space. Yeah, and we can also see that just by comparing the ratios that we found from the last problem, we know that x over 60 is equal to two times of x divided by 120. Yep. And I think at this one, you can always look at the answer choices too, because this is like the AMC type. Um, one of them was like, they take up the same amount of space, which doesn't really make sense because <laughs> given the numbers that doesn't work. One of them says 60, yeah. 60 times, which is also like, if it's 60 times, it better be like, I don't know, 8K, 16K video <laughs> or something, super high quality. Yeah, uh, 60 times is a lot. <laughs> yeah, that was way too much. So we're down to just two times or 1.5 times. And I guess I can see maybe if you get confused with the 90 minutes that they threw earlier in the problem, you might choose 1.5. But since we're only talking about these two things, it makes sense that, hey, it's exactly two. Yeah. All right. So I hope we have no more other questions for Professor Lowe. And in that case, we can just move on. So let's see. Let's call Professor Lowe back and let's finish the final part of today's explanation. All right, Professor Lowe. Is there one more technique you can share with us just to wrap it all up? I want to share with you one more technique as well, because the fun part about doing a question is actually being creative and coming up with techniques. This other technique doesn't need algebra. It just uses logic. Let's first imagine, what if we just used regular? all 90 minutes at regular. Well, you know how all of these displays work. Maybe you've seen this when you use a phone camera to shoot video. You'll have it on the regular setting. At the beginning, it will say capacity, 120 minutes. That's because most people in the world don't want you to tell them capacity, 128 gigabytes and leave you to try to figure out what's a gigabyte and what's a minute. Just tells you 120 minutes. What would happen if you filmed 90 minutes like that? At the end, it would tell you, you have 30 minutes left. Then, at the end, it would show 30 minutes left. But remember, that's 30 minutes of regular filming left. That's exactly what the display would say on the camera. And you'd say, darn it, I should have filmed more at high quality because I have some left. Well, what's the trade-off? Remember, you can film 120 minutes at regular or 60 minutes at high. That means that every minute of high is worth two minutes of regular. then this tells you what you can do. You see, if I have 30 minutes left over at the end, then what I should have done is I should have used some of those minutes to film at high. But every single minute that I switch from regular to high 
now eats up two minutes. Imagine if I said, let's film one minute at high. If you did that, then you would have used an extra minute of regular. Actually, then if you had it on the regular display, it would say 29 left. You see, this 30, that's the answer. The reason that's the answer is not just a coincidence. It's because every time you use a minute at high instead of regular, you use up an extra minute. And I have 30 extra minutes of regular to use up. So that's it. The answer is just because this trade, this trade, it's, what's important is not the two minutes at regular. What's important is one extra minute of regular. Because each minute at high is one extra minute of regular, the answer is just to take how many extra minutes of regular I had, which was 30. And that's the answer to the entire question, just that 30. I wanted to show these different techniques, not to indicate that one is the best. Actually, different techniques work better for different people. But it's even more fun if you just play the game of trying to come up with techniques. Actually, whenever I come up with questions for you to do, I try to think of questions that have a bunch of different ways to do them. And whenever I'm doing a question someone else gave to me, I think, is there another way to do that? That's the creative part of math. Try it next time you do a question. That was fun. There are a few ways to do each of the questions. Actually, you can be creative and even come up with your own other ways to solve the questions. All of these questions have some interesting math behind them. If you're interested in learning more in this way, we invite you to join the Daily Challenge with Po Shen Lo, where there's a systematic way to learn all of middle school math competition mathematics through these interesting questions. Whether you learn with us or from another source, I wish you the best in exploring mathematics through thinking. Awesome. That's all we have for the mock AMC8 portion of today's demo course. That was problem 15 for you. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I just really liked how we were shown three different solutions and three different approaches to how we could solve this problem. And I thought that was really creative. Is there anything you'd like to add, Eddie? Yeah, no, I actually just really like the problem in general. It's like something pretty realistic, you know, thinking about cameras, we, you know, phone stored, deal with that all the time now. Uh, it's better than the classic, like, I don't know, train problem. I'm not sure <laughs> if we're always thinking about like a schedule on a train, but like, hey, phones, we always take videos nowadays. So awesome. Now, that's all for me. Unless you want to add something, Jesse, I think we're ready to move on. Yeah. Okay, Professor Well, I'm going to toss it over to you. Hello. Well, I guess it's uh, it's me over here in real life at this point. Uh, hello. Well, it's a, very, it's a real pleasure to get to talk to everyone and to be able to show everybody what we are now doing with online learning. What do you guys think? We're really, really happy to have people like Eddie and Jesse to be able to do all of this. Now, for the rest of this live stream, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a little bit about how the structure of all of this puts together, because you've just seen this in action. In fact, you probably saw that they were reacting to you live uh, based on all the comments you had. We did this because we saw that one of the biggest problems with online education was that it seemed like Zoom class was usually very good at teaching people how to look at other tabs. Anyone know what I'm talking about? feel free to talk into the chat so that we can have some fun during this half as well. So again, the, the system works the same way as it did when they were teaching. All you have to do is you just send a, a message to chat relay. If you showed up late and you were wondering how everyone did this, just send your messages to chat relay and they'll appear up here onto the screen and then we can all interact together. Right. So you see, because of all of this, we also know that you're actually here, you're paying attention. And that, what we try to do is we try to make math as interesting and addictive as some of the other things that people were looking at. Because why not? Why not go and use the most modern methods that people use to learn things and use, uh, use, use, to, use to watch things and use to entertain themselves and use that same system to teach, right? And now the key ingredient by that, by the way, is that you need to have people who are really good at teaching. So that's why we were so happy to have amazing people like Eddie and Jesse on this system just here. And, and Eddie and Jesse, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, for any of you who came late, they're both math geniuses. But also you may have seen that they have been pretty good at communicating and getting people to pay attention. And that's actually because our program for the high school students is particularly special. What we do with high school students is we find the, the smartest math 
students in the country. And then we bring professional entertainers to teach them how to perform, teach them how to talk, teach them how to, of course, they knew how to talk before, right? You all learned that when you're three or something, but teach them how to talk in a way that makes people really want to listen. And so we do all of this, and then eventually they turn around and they're able to lead these kinds of incredible classes. Now, there are people, of course, who also want to know, what would you learn in these classes? Well, these classes are classes that teach you how to think. You may have noticed that the way that this entire system was run was that they didn't just tell you how to do the problem. We don't think that's the right way to learn. The right way to learn is not to have somebody just tell you, here's how you do a problem, now go practice 10 of them. The right way is to have people who are as dynamic and as good at math as, as Eddie and Jesse. And then what they do is they ask you what you think and you, you just suggest ideas. And because our hosts for these, for these classes are so broadly versed in mathematics, basically anything that you say, they will, be, they will grab your ideas and they will show how your little ideas that you just came up with to solve the questions, how they can be stitched together into big ideas that really solve the problem. And then of course, you, you notice that they brought me in uh, that was, of course, not me live, uh, because the way that our classes work, we have so many of our classes going at the same time that I can't possibly teach every single one of them live. But that's not the important part. The reason is because whenever they bring me in, that's when I'm giving the explanation very clearly of one particular method. And that's something which we spent all of the time doing. We spent all of this other time over the past few years coming up with methods to go and teach people through very carefully edited videos, teach people all of those key mathematical points. Now, those are the edited parts. Those are the parts you just watch for about three minutes. But the part that is improvisational and the part that involves your ideas, well, that's this new idea. That's where we bring in, uh, bring in people like Jesse and Eddie to be able to do that with you. So what you're seeing here is effectively, you're seeing a 2022 method of how would you combine both interactive and edited in video lessons? which makes one of, the, one of the most interesting new ways that you could go about learning math. Now, about the curriculum that we cover, actually, we, we don't teach anything which is just standard. Because as you can see, the, the teaching style is to teach you how to come up with your own ideas. And so we structure all of this around the kinds of problems that you'd see anyway if you were doing middle school math competitions in the USA or anywhere in the world. That's not because we just want you to do math competitions. Of course, if you do these classes, you'll become way better at math competitions, but that's not the point. The point is that if you use the math competition problems, they'll teach you how to think. Here's why. Math competition problems were written by people who were trying to come up with questions that aren't just like the ones in school. Have any of you ever done math contests before? Let's make this a bit more lively. When I don't see any chat, I wanna hear something. So, so have you ever done math competitions? Yeah. What makes those questions harder? Anyone want to type in the chat? Those math competition questions are harder than the questions that you do in school, like in a textbook. What makes them harder? Do you know? Oh, I see there are people who have even been in AMC before. Yeah, they require you to actually think. The big difference is that all of these questions that come into math competitions, they you have to, you have to think. You, they're, they're words. You, you don't know exactly what methods you're going to use. Wow, this is fun. Now people are actually talking. I like this. That means you're watching. OK, but the, but the point is that those questions were authored by people who were trying to make questions that will make you think. And so that's why we use those in order to teach you. It's not only because it helps you do well in math contests. It's because if you want to learn how to think, that's just where you'd start. Now, our classes run through a curriculum, which, which, is, which, is, which is going to take a tour of many different topics in math. Let me say a little bit about that. I'll show it over here. So for people who already have a sixth grade math background, some of, some of the people have this sixth grade math background when they're in elementary school. But when you have a sixth grade math background, we actually recommend you start with this thing called module zero. And what that does is it takes you on an efficient whirlwind tour because math is actually very interesting. It's not just that you have to do all of algebra before you can do all of, uh, all of geometry. No, you can actually start, you can mix all of those different topics together. And what we find is that people who already know sixth grade math, you're already equipped to start going and touring and seeing algebra, geometry, and so on. Actually, just to give you an idea of what that looks like, I'm just going to show it over here. The, the curriculum, for example, for the module zero, I'm just popping this up on my side. We all have the same uh, technology system, both the teaching assistants and myself. But we have this, this, this course sequence where, for example, for the introduction, module zero, the way that works is that the first day you have geometry, but then the second day it already jumps into algebra and number theory. Third day you're off into combinatorics, fourth day is probability, and it just keeps going. And this is interesting because it's taking a big tour. 
right? The point is, instead of having to sit on just one subject for the entire year, you start bouncing around to different things. All of the questions are chosen on purpose so that you wouldn't be taken out beyond what you could possibly hope to do. That's what module zero looks like. Oh, yes, people are asking all kinds of questions, right? So people have noticed perhaps that we have other topics as well. For example, number theory. And the way this works, by the way, is after doing module zero, we recommend that you just go on module one. And now that goes into algebraic concepts. Then module two, geometry. Module three, combinatorics. Four goes back to more algebra. And five is number theory. And that's because there, are, there actually is number theory also in these math competitions. But the important thing is that number theory is actually not really taught in school. So by, by having all of these different topics here, it becomes possible for people to learn all kinds of math that they wouldn't normally see in school. Something about the way these classes are run, I, I should probably say, if you can see, I had showed you, I showed you a calendar. And the calendar is because we actually are about to start an entire summer program. In fact, you're just in time if you wanted to join. The summer program begins on June 14th. And if you can see, we actually are running this in a way where they're running Monday through Friday. We do start on a Tuesday, but they run Monday, Monday through Friday, and there's a gap on Saturday and Sunday. The gap is because there are some hard problems, like week one challenge problems. The way this works is that after doing four days of class, then you have enough knowledge that you can start thinking about some harder questions. And then those harder questions, well, there are 20 of them. So we give you two days over the weekend to think about them. Those 20 questions, 10 of them are reasonable. The other 10 are not so reasonable, and they become less and less reasonable as you go towards the end. But the point is to learn math by challenging yourself. So that's, that's the way this all works. So the structure of all of this is that our courses are in fact designed so that you could actually go and do this during your summer vacation. Let me just pull this back over here. This is all from the course website, by the way. So for example, uh, we actually have these two sessions, which are both on this daily pace. The recommended pace is actually to go four weeks, five weekdays per week. And the homework is on weekends, as I just said. On Tuesday, June 14th, that's when our first summer session starts. If you liked this particular way of learning, actually, this is just the right time if you want to join. This is just the right time to join. And so we'll have a four-week session that goes from June 14th to July 11th. It's taught in exactly the style that you just saw, which is two genius high school students coached by drama professionals. And then they lead you in this way of learning where we interact with all of you on this chat. Uh, something that is important to point out is that all of these classes, we emphasize the interactive component. So this is not your regular Zoom. In fact, it is just like this. Ooh, what time is it at? Great question. Let me just go and put it over here. I'm just going to continue sharing this screen. So timetables. Uh, the way the timetables are is, is that they just, they just run across sort of like a university in the sense that module zero, these are all Eastern time. Eastern time, 9.45, there's a module zero. 11 a.m., there's a module one. We have multiple module zero times precisely because there are people from lots of different time zones all over the world who, uh, who, are, who are interested in taking our course. And the courses go and continue running all the way into the evening. Session two, that's the second part, July 12th onward, we have even more classes. In fact, by then it even opens up classes which are uh, in number theory. That's the five o'clock PM Eastern time on the second half. So the important thing is that we have all of these different, uh, different levels, they're running at different times. And oh yes, thanks for asking Tiger. Module four is like a more advanced version of module one, that's correct. And actually the reason why there are the, the reason why there are so many different times that you see algebra is because algebra is actually the most common topic that you'd see in a lot of these middle school math competitions. <laughs> oh, wow, this is a lot of fun. I also want to say one thing about the chat. You may notice that right now inside the chat, we just saw one person respond to another person. This is on purpose. We actually built this because we found out that this is the best way to have middle school students who might be able to let middle, to let middle and elementary school students interact with each other and create a community while they're learning math. This whole thing was inspired by something I did two years ago called Ask Math Anything. I'm not sure if any of you know what this is, but two years ago during the pandemic, I used to stream live on YouTube and on YouTube live uh, every single day. And when I was doing this, then uh, I found out that it created an entire community of people who were all learning math together online. And that encouraged everyone to be able to learn more math as well. So that's why we built this, this system up. Uh, about the way that the, 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 the courses are structured. Well, we also, I also want to say a little bit of what is the right place to start. Because a lot of times when you, 
when, when you when you're when you're looking at a course series, right? The first thing is what is the method that is used to teach the courses? Well, you've just seen it here. Uh, as far as we know, there's nobody else in the entire world who, who runs a method like this. But then apart from the method, the question is, where do you start? So the place that you start, uh, we actually have on the course website, uh, Learning Pathways Clicker. It's actually pretty simple. So for example, if you have already taken systematic math courses outside of school, a math contest courses outside of school, well, then we would give you more questions like, um, are geometry questions hard for you? And if so, well, then you should go and take this particular path. But for a lot of people who have not taken systematic math classes outside of school math, then the key question is just, do you know sixth grade math already? If yes, then we recommend module zero through five. If no, then what we say is you need to at least have the basics. The basics are to at least understand decimals, fractions, and percents. Because if not, we'll tell you, unfortunately, you might be too young. But if yes, then here's what we recommend for you. Module zero is the smallest number, but zero is a weird number. So actually what zero is, is zero is this tour. Zero has topics from all over mathematics. What we recommend for people who don't know sixth grade math, but do know decimals, fractions, and percents, is that you just start with module one. Oh, you're curious where you can find this website that I'm on. Well, this website that I was on is just the course website. That's live.poshenlo.com. And I'm guessing that one of the people from our team, yes, thank you very much, Emily, is going to post it out to everybody. It's just live.poshenlo.com. This is on the summer page. So if you go to the live.poshenlo.com, there's this summer page or enroll in summer or something like that. Click on that and you'll get here. But now back to what I was showing. What I was showing here was you start with module one if you already know about decimal fractions and percents. And then after that, you can go right back to module zero and you can actually go and learn how interesting math is. We have found that this model works very well for most people. Right. So the structure of this is that people are able to indeed take these classes and focus on the topics they want when they want, or take the big introduction if they're new. Oh, somebody just said that M2, M2 is geometry, by the way, and the math comes jump. If they, take, if they take module three, will they see same or even more improvement? I think what I should say here is that you can, you can see improvement as you go and learn these special topics classes, certainly. And I think that because combinatorics, which is module three, is not really taught, when, when you're in normal school, then that will actually patch a lot of holes that you might have when you want to go up in, for example, math counts. But again, our emphasis is on teaching people how to think, not only on teaching people how to do uh, math competition problems. That's just a fun side effect. Pretty good side effect though. Okay, now maybe I'll make another comment about why you might not have seen anything like this before. So this particular model of teaching is unusual because uh, actually technology is not easy to do. If you see this technology setup that I'm a teaching assistants for using, it's not actually easy to set up. In fact, if you came here early, you might have overheard them as they were working out all of the kinks to make all of this possible. And indeed, why is it that there's no one copying us? Well, as far as we know, there's actually nobody else who knows how to do this technology. There's another piece, which is this Zoom chat. Actually, this, this Zoom chat is something that I wrote. So we are actually the only people who have this particular system that's in here. Uh, at some point, somebody else, if they want to do this, they would need to go and write this as well. But uh, in order to pull all of this off, you actually need a combination of all the technology and the brilliant people. And the key question was before is, how would you get a Jesse or an Eddie to be involved in something like this? And for us, the reason that we were able to do this is by making something that was actually valuable for them. You see, here's a little secret. While they're teaching you those classes, at the exact same time, there's another person watching on our side. And that person is a drama professional. And that drama professional is giving guidance to our brilliant high school students, teaching them how to perform and how to communicate in ways that make other people listen. You see, this is actually one of the superpowers, if you ever get it, if you ever have a chance to get it. The ability to talk to people in a way that makes other people want to listen to you is extremely powerful. And what we do is we're having professionals teaching our high school students how to do that while they're teaching you. So that's actually why we are able to have these extraordinarily motivated and capable people teaching these classes is because that skill is useful for them to pick up. Oh, Flower Liu, seventh grade, should you be doing module zero? Uh, quite possibly, yes. If you have never done math competitions before, then actually, if you, sorry, if you've never done math competition classes before, you should actually go and take module zero. In fact, just today, I got a review from somebody who was an adult who had talked about how he was taking module zero and learning a lot of things. That, that was his review, his review of the entire course. Uh, 
And so the way our system works is it's not just going to teach you standard math. In fact, module zero just means if you already know the sixth grade math, great, let's go and play with all kinds of fun things. Ah, Brandy, thanks. If you missed the class, can you play back? The way this works is that the live component, that part doesn't play back. However, all of the parts which are me talking, which is about half of the class, actually those you can all play back. The live component is not possible to play back because it involves too much interaction with other people and to provide protect their privacy, we actually don't live stream other people's faces and voices uh, onto the internet. I mean, we don't, we don't save them and copy them. Oh, question, Leo Pai, how many, I like the name, how many people are in each class? Well, actually our class sizes are about 20 to 40 people. And we chose that number because that is optimal for making there be a lively chat, but making it so that it's not too lively. We've tried all kinds of things. We've tried five person classes, 10 person classes, 20 person classes, 40 person classes, 100 person classes. And we found out that 40 is actually the sweet spot. So we just did that. Ooh, yes. Can I take M1 before M0 if that works better for me? Yes. And we recommend you do that, JC, with seven stars. We recommend that you do that if you happen to not know the sixth grade math, but you do know how to add, how to do decimals, fractions, and percents. Are these suitable for fourth grader, rising fifth grader? It's, it's possible. You just have to make sure you're very comfortable with decimals, fractions, and percents, and then you probably start with module one. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's nice to learn about all of you guys to go and understand your backgrounds. Right, a lot of people who are at the going into sixth grade, going to fifth grade, going into seventh grade, these are all great fits for module zero one. And actually people who are even in high school, they're there are, there, if you've never done these math competition classes before, module zero is also going to teach you a ton, a ton. It's totally different from your school class. Okay, great. So this was the main part I wanted to talk about of how this whole thing is structured. Again, I'm going to emphasize that we have the classes actually starting on Tuesday. So if you're interested, this is the sort of the last moment to get into the first round of classes. We, of course, have a second round of classes, which will happen to start a month later. But we do recommend if you like this particular teaching style, you will not find it anywhere else on the internet. And if you'd like to join the classes to make the most of your summer, we start on Tuesday. For somebody who got AMC top 1% in Australia, congratulations. Well, what we'd say there is that it depends on exactly where you are. And that's why inside that chooser thing we had, we'd ask you, do you find questions in geometry hard? Do you find questions in all of these other topics hard? And once we know which is the one that you find hard, that's where we would recommend for you to go and, and, and start studying. Yes, great. Okay, with all of that, yeah, what's the most optimal module to start on? Again, that learning pathway section is the one that would show you, that's the one that would show you where is the most optimal to start on. Okay. Now, I think what I want to do with the last eight minutes is that if there are any questions that anyone wants to ask, you're welcome to ask them, uh, ask them to me. We also have two other incredible people here. And I'd like to have all of us, you know, use this last eight minutes to answer any questions people might have about the learning format or any of this. So one moment. Yeah, okay, we got all kinds of questions coming in. Okay, somebody made it into state, but can't get into Math Counts Nationals. Congratulations. Depends on what state you're in. Uh, some states are very difficult to get to Math Counts Nationals. Some are a bit, a bit less unreasonable. But the recommendation would be to work on questions that are challenging for you. And for example, on our courses, you would probably find module three and five, combinatorics and number theory, to be quite challenging. Most people will find them very challenging. And depending on which state you're in, it might be more suitable to start with an earlier module, but we definitely have things here. Is there a lot of homework? Uh, well, there are these 20 questions. You should spend at least an hour a week. However, we know, we know that there are people who are spending like three hours a week because they really wanna to try to do the harder questions. Oh, which competitions do I recommend someone in Canada does? Well, I would recommend that you work on AMCs, American ones, as well as the Canadian ones. They're, they're run by something called CEMC. And there's something called Gauss competition, and they're all named after mathematicians. Yes, CEMC, thanks, Edison. The premise of combinatorics is that counting is hard. The premise of combinatorics is that there are lots of things that look not systematic, and if you can find a systematic way to do it, then suddenly you can systematically calculate very large things that would be too hard to count yourself. Oh, which module is geometry? Yes, Tiger is module two for us. Oh, Kaylee, silly a lot. Will these help, help sharpen? Um, 
they would in the following way. My father actually once told me the way to make less silly mistakes is just to do every problem in two different ways, two fundamentally different ways. And so what we, what we recommend is that just keep coming up with different ways of solving problems. And then when you're checking your answer, you can see if the two ways match. And that's why our teaching style is entirely around teaching people how to come up with different ways to do problems. Okay. <laughs> you guys seem to have some experience with our system. Chat really is so starry tonight. Very good. Okay, great. Are there other questions? Oh, this is interesting. Doing problems too slow. Uh, the first thing I'd say is that the more important thing is just to learn how to be able to come up with ways to solve problems. And if you are too slow at solving the problems, you'll get faster if you just keep working on them. But it's more important to be able to come up with the new ways. Now, also, I should say, eventually the problems just get so hard that the speed is not the issue. And the most important skill to get from middle school is actually to learn how to think. Cool. Any other questions? I, I'm glad you like chat relay, Derek. <laughs> so do we. Oh. If you've done math contests but haven't taken any classes, if you know sixth grade math already, go with module zero. That's the way to go. Otherwise, if you don't, but you know how to do decimals, fractions, and percents, go for module one and you'll be fine. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. So, math from textbooks, unfortunately, uh, that's not always as engaging as a real person. Uh, and the real people you see here are pretty interesting. So, uh, I, think, I think it'll be different. It, it just depends. Uh, it just depends in the sense that if you are able to motivate yourself looking at a textbook, good for you, congratulations. But we do all of this because we think it's more interesting when you have actually live people uh, live streaming on video. Oh, Annika, this is a good one. Quick off-topic question. Can too much math be bad for you? By the way, off-topic is totally fine because we're nearing the end. And in fact, one thing about this is that in our classes, we always have a bit of time at the end where you also get to hang out with the people teaching and ask all kinds of off-topic questions because actually the off-topic questions are also interesting to learn. Uh, now, too much math. Well, the main thing is there are other useful skills in the world. And that's why, for example, the program that we run for high school students is precisely getting the people who were great at math already and then teaching them all of these other skills. I actually work with lots of people who are great at math. In fact, if you can see where I am right now, this is a college dormitory. This is a dormitory at Carnegie Mellon University. And the reason is because the National Math Olympiad training camp is happening right now, right here. And so I'm living at the university in the student housing with all of the students. Now, that means I'm working with all of these people who are very good at math. But the interesting thing is the, the, the most time I spend with them is actually talking about non-math things. In fact, every night with these students, I just talk to them for about an hour about all these other concepts that you'd use in life, which is sort of what we made this program for our high school students for all year round. So in some sense, the biggest thing that I contribute to the National Math Olympiad team is actually uh, teaching these non-math things and for the high school students in our program, that's also when I'm involved in teaching them. Okay, more questions. Uh, oh, yes. Do I think math is invented or discovered? I think it's discovered. I think it's already there. Struggle in counting and probability a lot. Which modules should you take? That would be module three combinatorics. Okay, cool. Are there any other questions? You can ask questions to the, uh, to the high school students too. They're still here. If you need help in number theory, do I take M4 or M5? It'll be five. Five is the, is the module for number theory. Any other questions? Uh-oh, do I like verbs? Now here, I really need to ask the high school students, what are verbs? I love verbs. I love verb. Let me go draw a verb. All right, um, here, let's try my it's best. Like, I think it's like um, kind of like a meme based off of a bird. Okay. I always interpret it as just a one really fat bird, like, you know, tweet, tweet. <laughs> it's, trying to, it's trying to fly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can draw really well. No, no, no. That's this so is cute. just a random bird. <laughs> <laughs> Makes your favorite. Very nice. That looks like a rubber ducky. Maybe. Maybe that's what the inspiration is. We'll call it rubber ducky. Very good. Very good. Rubber Okay, so I guess the answer was yes. Thanks for the question. Is there a good way to remember which is M1 and Edison is just on the website. Honestly, the number of the module is less important than just what, what the word is. And on the website, you're good. Okay. 
Oh, and if you struggle on competitions during questions during competitions, but find them easy when you recap, what should you do? You should do more problems, which you don't know how to do yet. And that's why the way that we teach all of the classes is to just say, here are some problems that you don't know how to do. Give it a think. And we have people to help you think through them. If you can do that, then you'll be good. Oh, Anna, you learned a lot in M1. Should you take M4 next? Those are the two algebra ones. I would say it depends on how big of a hurry you're in. If you're not in a huge hurry, or well, actually, even if you are in a hurry, I generally would recommend you go through module two and three in between, because that will teach you all these other concepts that are also very useful. <laughs> OK, anything else? Because we're getting towards the end. Oh, Edison, let's take this one. Do you ever like freeze up during a test? Oh. Great. Do any uh, do our, uh, like let's, our high school students can give some tips on this. Let's go. I actually took a test today and I definitely froze up during some of the questions. Um, I think the first thing I would say is skip it and go back to it because sometimes what happens is you look at it and the first moment you're like, I don't know what to do at all. But maybe you do some other completely different one. The next time you come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes, you're like, whoa, this is right in front of me all along. Um, so hopefully that works. Otherwise, sometimes starting it, just getting, just make some step and then maybe that other step like, oh, now I see it. Or sometimes play around with it, I don't know. <laughs> At least try something. Yeah, I think like, even if your mind freezes up at a test, I would just try something and then see if that leads to something that might help you solve the problem, like during a test. And then I think usually after a test, I just go and practice because like, Mainly the reason why my mind freezes up is that I haven't practiced enough. And so I just usually go and practice and like try to review what I remember. Well, that's a good one. And, and actually this thing about reviewing is also useful. Like after you've done something, it's good to look at the questions that you haven't done and actually think about those. Those are the ones you learn the most. And Tiger, thanks for saying that, you know, everyone freezes up during a test. The, the thing is that the time limit, sometimes when you get towards the end, it makes you very nervous. So I think that the best thing to do is just learn to power through. Uh, and that's actually why it's useful to do these contests, because in real life, you often do have to power through. Uh, there's, you never know when something comes up in real life, not even mathematics. And it's useful if you have this background where when things are tough, you can still keep your brain cool and go through it. That's sort of like how we managed to make this live stream work tonight. <laughs> uh, actually, that's, that's one of the reasons why I don't see this technology used extensively. Actually, computers keep breaking because various parts automatically update. And so the reason why it's so hard to do what we're doing is because when the systems are all working, well, the next day it might be that Mac updated something and poof, and suddenly everyone needs to solve the problem on the fly. So that's actually what we focus on. We focus on teaching you how to have that. And of course, all of our team have that background. With that, we're basically through to the end. Uh, I think we're basically through to the end. So with that, I think I'll just say we had lots of fun. Thanks for your questions. <laughs> Edison, you are so funny. Modulo is. That's why these are called modules. Yes. OK, but anyway, you guys are so funny. This is actually why I love having the chat, because this makes everything to be more interactive. But thank you, everyone, for coming today. Hopefully, you had as much fun as we had. And what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, we're going to leave this on YouTube. We actually have our part, which went on to YouTube. And so that will be there in case you ever want to see this particular show again. But if you like this way of learning, we have our classes starting on Tuesday. So this is sort of the time to get in if you're interested. Thank you, everybody. We're going to then sign off uh, for tonight. So thank you. Take care. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Yep. I'll close out the YouTube stream. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.